The Order of Christian Burial is found on page 206 in the hymnal in front of you in the pews. Please turn to it. Blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, the source of all mercy and the God of all consolation. He comforts us in all our sorrows so that we can comfort others in their sorrows with the consolation we ourselves have received from God. Thanks be to God. When we were baptized into Christ Jesus, we were baptized into his death. We were buried therefore with him by baptism into death, so that if Christ was raised from the dead by the glory of the Father, we too might live a new life. For if we have been united with him in a death like his, we shall certainly be united with him in a resurrection like his. I invite you to turn to him, 532, How Great Thou Art. And if you're able, please stand. <clears throat>
Please be seated. On behalf of Rich's family, I want to thank you all for your presence here today and for the many acts of love and kindness that have been shown in recent days. They are all very much appreciated. And again, I remind you that if you choose to remain here at the church while the family goes to the cemetery, they invite you to begin having the luncheon. And then when they return, you have an opportunity to be with them and greet them. Our service continues on page 207. The Lord be with you. Let us pray. O God of grace and glory, we remember before you today our brother Rich. We thank you for giving him to us to know and to love as a companion in our pilgrimage on earth. In your boundless compassion, console us who mourn. Give us your aid so we may see in death the gate to eternal life, that we may continue our course on earth in confidence until by your call, we are reunited with those who have gone before us. Through your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Whenever we face death, we turn to God's word. Because God has promised in his word that he will bring salvation into the world. We have recently celebrated the birth of our Savior, which is the fulfillment of that promise. The promise that even though this life ends, it is not the end of life. It is but the beginning of life. Our first reading comes to us from the prophet Isaiah in the 25th chapter. On this mountain, the Lord of hosts will make for all peoples a feast of fat things, a feast of wine on the lees, of fat things full of marrow, of wine on the lees well refined. And he will destroy on this mountain the covering that is cast over all peoples, the veil that is spread over all nations. He will swallow up death forever. And the Lord God will wipe away the tears from all faces, and the reproach of his people he will take away from all the earth, for the Lord has spoken. It will be said on that day, Lo, this is our God. We have waited for him that he might save us. This is the Lord. We have waited for him. Let us be glad and rejoice in his salvation. Thus far the first reading. Our psalm text today is taken from Psalm 121. I invite you to join me in reading the psalm together. I lift up my eyes, from where will my help come? My help comes from the Lord who made heaven and earth. He will not let your foot be moved. He who keeps you will not slumber. He who keeps Israel will neither slumber nor sleep. The Lord is your keeper. The Lord is your shade at your right hand. The sun shall not strike you by day, nor the moon by night. The Lord will keep you from all evil. He will keep your life. The Lord will keep your going out and your coming in from this time forth and forevermore. Our second reading comes to us from the last book of Scripture, the Revelation to St. John, in the 22nd chapter. Then he showed me the river of the water of life, bright as crystal, flowing from the throne of God and of the Lamb. Through the middle of the street of the city, also on either side of the river, the tree of life with its 12 kinds of fruit, yielding its fruit each month. And the leaves of the tree were there for the healing of the nations. There shall no more be anything accursed, but the throne of God and of the Lamb shall be in it. And his servants shall worship him. They shall see his face and his name shall be on their foreheads and night shall be no more, for they need no lamp or sun. For the Lord God will be their light, and they shall reign forever and ever. Thus far the reading. Before we hear the Holy Gospel, I want to share with you the obituary. An obituary is a starting point. Rich is held in your memory now. Until we see him again in the kingdom, what we will have of him is the memories that you have made with him over the years. 
and you've already begun sharing those memories. I'm sure you have. You shared them with laughter and with tears. You share them with neighbors and friends, and you teach them to the young ones who may not have had a chance to fully know him. That's where you will hold him until we see him again. And to remember is a holy thing. We belong to the God who remembers. And when God remembers, it exists. And God remembers us as he remembers Rich today. Richard Rich Edelman, 81, of Green, Iowa, passed away on Friday, January 5, 2024, at the University of Iowa Hospitals and Clinics in Iowa City, surrounded by his loving family. Rich was born on November 18, 1942, in Parkersburg, Iowa, to Henry and Sophie Thorne Edelman. He was graduated from the Green High School, and on January 30, 1965, he was united in marriage to the love of his life, Rose Zell Wardis, at St. John Lutheran Church in Clarksville. To this union, two daughters were born, Rochelle and Robin. The couple made their home in Green and were lifelong residents. They are currently members of St. Peter's Lutheran Church. Rich worked for Oliver Farm Equipment Company in Charles City, which in 1960 was purchased by White Farm Equipment. He worked as a tool grinder and enjoyed telling stories about his time working there. He got laid off from White Farm Equipment in 1980. Then he and his wife started their own business, Edelman Concrete and Trucking, in 1976, and he was still working on it until his passing. Rich was an extremely hard worker and an excellent provider for his family. Richard was an avid sports fan. He enjoyed watching the Iowa State Cyclones basketball and football, go clones, to which he held season tickets for many years. He also was a Minnesota Vikings fan and a race car fan. He got tickets for, to the Michigan NASCAR races for several years and enjoyed bringing his family along. He often took trips with Rose to Texas to visit relatives, relatives and friends. He was the kind of person who would do anything for you. Rich could strike up a conversation with anyone and knew many people because of his business. He attended his grandchildren's activities as much as he could. His family was of the utmost importance. He was a wonderful husband, dad, grandpa, brother, and friend. Left to cherish his memory include his wife of 58 years, Rose, his two daughters, Rochelle and Jeff Lewis, and Robin and Scott Lurson, grandchildren, Jordan and Katie Lewis, Jocelyn and Michael Kruger, Stephanie Lurson, Eric Lurson, and Tanner Lurson. Great grandchildren, Ellie and Lena Lewis, siblings, Larry and Helene Edelman, Gloss and Dolores Edelman, Alvin and Judy Edelman, Wanda Buchholz, Carol and Duane Stotler, and Kathy and Alan Siemens, as well as sister-in-law Shirley Wordis and Ruth Edelman, as well as many nieces and nephews. Rich was preceded in death by his parents, Henry and Sophie, his brothers, Ronald and Lester, brother-in-law, Vern Buchholz, and sister-in-law, Gert Edelman. May his memory be blessed among us. The Holy Gospel today is taken from the Gospel according to St. John, beginning in the 14th chapter. And if you're able, I ask you to rise for the Gospel. These are the words of Jesus. Let not your hearts be troubled. Believe in God, believe also in me. In my Father's house are many rooms. If it were not so, would I have told you that I go to prepare a place for you? And when I go and prepare a place for you, I will come again and will take you to myself, that where I am, you may be also. And you know the way where I am going. Thomas said to him, Lord, we do not know where you are going. How can we know the way? Jesus said to him, I am the way and the truth and the life. No one comes to the Father but by me. The Gospel of the Lord. Raised to you, O Christ. Please be seated. I invite you to turn to hymn number 448, Amazing Grace.
can be as long as life endures. Let's pray. Father, we give you thanks for the gift of life that was lived among us in Rich. We give you thanks for all the days we are allowed and privileged to have him among us. And we give you thanks that he is at rest and at peace in you. We pray for Rose and the family that you surround them with your love and your presence for the days and weeks and months ahead so that they can go on in the confidence that you have sent into the world through your Son, who is our Savior, who lifts us up out of death into life. Now, Lord, gather us around your word. Help us to hear it, and in hearing it, help us to live. We ask and pray all these things in your name. Amen. Friends, grace and peace to you today from God our Father, through our risen Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. Death troubles us, especially when it takes someone we love from us. It troubles us. It troubles us when it comes unexpectedly. It troubles us when it comes at the end of a long illness. Death troubles us because to our eyes and to what we can understand, death appears to be so powerful a thing so cruel a thing that it takes from us those whom we love and who have loved us. Death troubles us. Rich was too young to be taken from us. I know the calendar says he was 81 years old, but that was just a number for him. Rich was too young to be taken from us because he kept working. He kept doing the things he enjoyed, kept good business going, traveling, with family and being with his kids and grandkids, found time for NASCAR, the Vikings, and the Cyclones. Yeah, the calendar may have said he was 81 years old, but that was just a number. It was not any restriction on his life. He lived it as fully as he could. And you are all witnesses to that. He especially cherished his family, as I know you cherished him. In fact, the greatest purpose in his life after the love of the Lord was his family, the blessing that God provided him in that family, the joy that the family brought him. I remember not that long ago, I was here for Jocelyn's wedding, and I asked the parents and grandparents to stand up and to tell us how long they had been married. And... Richard, uncharacteristically of a husband, knew exactly how many years he had been married. And you should have seen the joy in his face when he spoke those words about the long years of marriage to Rose, the love of his life. That's what it meant for him to have family, to have the joy of those who love you and whom you love. And so, yes, In the face of his death, our hearts are troubled because death has taken him from you. We love, and the price we pay for love are the tears we shed when those whom we love have died. For if there is no sorrow, if there is no grief in our hearts, there was no love. But he loved you and you loved him. And yes, death troubles us. For all we have now are the memories that we hold dear, that we treasure, that we hold on to and will share with generations yet to be born. Because as human beings, we stare at the face of death, and for us it is uncharted territory. It is that dark valley where we can see no trace of light. Death disorients us bringing us confusion so that we don't often know which way to turn or what to do next. We want to cry out as St. Thomas did in our gospel lesson today, Lord, we don't know where you are going. How can we know the way? We feel lost. 
Thomas, even though he had seen wonders by the hands of Jesus, who not long before this moment had witnessed the raising of Lazarus from the dead, still was confused and uncertain about what that future would hold. But thanks be to God that there is an answer to Thomas's cry. There is an answer to our anxiety and fear in the face of death. And that answer is in the person of Jesus. For Jesus answered Thomas's cry. He answers our cry as we contend with Richard's death. As he said to St. Thomas, he says to us here today, I am the way, I am the truth, I am the life. No one comes to the Father except by me. Jesus has made way for us to God the Father. Jesus is the truth of God's promises kept to us because in Jesus the fullness of God was pleased to dwell and he came among us to bear in himself the sin and the dying of the whole of creation, to become our salvation so we can stand in the face of death and have no doubt that death does not have the final word. Have no doubt that because Rich lived in the faith that he is alive in Christ for the promise that the God who sent his son to die for us is that those who trust and believe in him will never die. Yes, we will leave this life and go into the next, but it is always life. And so though our hearts may be troubled and unsettled by Rich's death, it cannot undo the promises of God in Jesus Christ. Death cannot banish God's love, God's mercy, God's grace. Death cannot undo what he has done through Jesus' death and resurrection. Death, even if it presents to us the darkest of valleys in which we can see no hope or light, God gives us the light of Christ who illumines the darkness and leads us out of the valley into the light and the mercy of God. Death may cause us to be troubled, but in Christ, our hearts are given peace and hope. For Jesus has conquered death. In the resurrection from the dead, Jesus has promised to all of those who are baptized and who believe in him that though they die, they too will live because in Christ is our resurrection. And so we live in Christ. We daily die and rise in Christ. And when our final hour comes, as it has for rich, we know that death will try to instill fear in our hearts, but Jesus will assure us that even here, in the face of death, I am present, and death has no final say. Jesus brings us through the dark valley. Jesus shields us from death, eternal death, and gives us hope. Richard lived in Jesus' promise the whole of his life, and he died in that promise, and now he yet lives again in the fulfillment of that promise. That which was promised to him when he was baptized has now been completed, and he sees the Father face to face and rejoices with the joys of heaven, and I know longs for us to join him there so that when our time comes, we can face our final hour in the same confidence and hope that our Lord gives to all whom he has claimed through, our, through his baptism into our death and resurrection. So we trust and our confidence is undeterred because we have a savior, a savior who loves us, a savior who dies for us, a savior who is raised for us. And so our troubled hearts can be at peace we can be at peace because we know that rich is enfolded in the unbounded love of God. We can be at peace because that same unbounded love is ours here today. And though we are parted for a little while, there will be a day in which we get to say hello again, in which we greet one another in the kingdom. And in that place, death is no more. And there are never any goodbyes there. 
It is only God, his love, and all who have gone before us. And so into that, we trust our troubled hearts and give God thanks for so great a love and care and keeping and look forward to the day in which we all gather before the throne. Amen. We will now hear the song, Daddy's Hands. I invite you to turn to page 209 in your hymnals where you'll find the Apostles' Creed and I ask you to stand as we confess our faith. God has made us his people through our baptism into Christ. Living together in trust and hope, we confess our faith. I believe in God the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord. He was conceived by the power of the Holy Spirit and born of the Virgin Mary. He suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. On the third day, he rose again. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. 
he will come again to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Let us pray. Almighty God, you have knit your chosen people together in one communion, in the mystical body of your Son, Jesus Christ our Lord. Give your old church in heaven and on earth your light and your peace. Hear us, Lord. Grant that all who have been baptized into Christ's death and resurrection may die to sin and rise to newness of life, and that through the grave and the gate of death we may pass with him to our joyful resurrection. Hear us, Lord. Grant to us who are still in our pilgrimage and who walk as yet by faith that your Holy Spirit may lead us in holiness and righteousness all our days. Hear us, Lord. Grant your faithful people pardon and peace, that we may be cleansed from all our sins and serve you with a quiet mind. Hear us, Lord. Grant to all who mourn us your confidence in your loving care, that casting all their sorrow on you, they may know the consolation of your love. Hear us, Lord. Give courage and faith to those who are bereaved, that they may have strength to meet the days ahead in the comfort of a holy and certain hope and in the joyful expectation of eternal life with those they love. Hear us, Lord. Help us, we pray, in the midst of things we cannot understand, to believe and trust in the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, and the resurrection to life everlasting. Hear us, Lord. Grant us grace to entrust rich to your never-failing love which sustained him in this life. Receive him into the arms of your mercy. Remember him according to the favor you bear for your people. Hear us, Lord. God, the generations rise and pass away before you. You are the strength of those who labor. You are the rest of the blessed dead. We rejoice in the company of your saints. We remember all who have lived in faith, all who have peacefully died, and especially those most dear to us who rest in you. Give us in time our portion with those who have trusted in you and have striven to do your holy will. To your name with the church on earth and the church in heaven, we ascribe all honor and glory now and forever. Amen. Lord, remember us in your kingdom and teach us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Please be seated. In your hands, O merciful Savior, we commend your servant, Richard. Acknowledge we humbly beseech you, a sheep of your own fold, a lamb of your own flock, a sinner of your own redeeming. Receive him into the arms of your mercy, into the blessed rest of everlasting peace, and into the glorious company of the saints in light. Amen. Before we depart, I ask you to join me in singing our table grace, and we will feast in paradise. Be present at our table, Lord. Be here and everywhere adored. These mercies bless and grant that we may feast in paradise with thee. Amen. Let us go forth in peace in the name of Christ. Amen. I'm going to a city oh, where 
where the streets go to lay And they say the tree of life Right there is blooming beside that crystal water And, and the roses never, never fade But I want to tell you about it now Sing it now, Joe. Then, Lord, it seems like all the beauty so swiftly is decayed. Never, never fade. 